This is the Dave and Checky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Dune. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair. Cause it's the freaking Dave and Checky Show. Checky Show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some Raffi. This is the Dave and Checky Show. Goddamn hippie. That hippie, <laughs> that hippie stole my, my sugar rag CD. What? <laughs> what hippie is that? I got a fucking fashionable hippie. From the 90s. He stole my Sugar Ray CD, man. What I'm still you, freaking out about it. Did that really happen? Well, what if it did? A fashionable hippie could do bad things. I, I, Have you ever seen one? A fashionable hippie? Yeah. I, I think they're hipsters now. Like, they try to dress groovy. Well, back in my day, they were fashionable hippies. Uh-huh. They had credit cards. Oh. But they were hippies. Uh-huh. They, 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 it was a contradiction of terms. I see. Stole my Sugar Ray CD, man. Uh-huh. Mark McGrath. I was really into him. Were you? No. I see. I still am, though. You still... Not. I see. Okay. Well, um, I'm sorry to hear that that happened to you. Yeah, well, just keep an eye on those goddamn fashionable hippies. Because they may smell okay on the outside, but inside they're rotten. I don't know that I've ever had a... F- I've s- ever met a fashionable hippie. They may or may not have patchouli on. Doesn't matter if you're a guy or girl. Oh, you, that's oh, the thing about a fashionable hippie. You think they that's... love patchouli. Oh, okay. Well, then that I, of course, have run into many times. And those clove cigarettes, are they also fashionable hippie? Yes. Ugh, okay. Vests. Vests are included usually. Vests? Some, some form of a vest. No, uh-uh. Yeah. But I don't... Uh... You might not see it underneath all the other stuff, but it's there. Oh, it's hidden, hidden beneath the fanny pack. There's a vest. Okay, so fanny pack, vest, patchouli, and clove cigarettes. Yeah, an overpriced weed. Uh, no, and your uh, CD. My my, my <coughs> Mark McGrath CD. Yeah. God for God's sake, you've All seen right. it, so you know what I'm talking about. You've seen that person. <clears throat> I haven't seen the CD part, but I have. I th- we just called them tricksters. Oh, don't call them, because if you call them too many times, they'll show up at your door. What do you mean? Then you got to invite them in, and then it's all over. I'm not inviting the tricksters in. Um, Okay, anyway. uh, Welcome, 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 everyone. This is episode number 96 of the Middle-Aged Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast, featuring your pals... I didn't prepare today. Oh. Featuring your pals Dave and Shecky. That's correct. Why is it? Oh my God! It's an original. I'm uh, uh, uh okay. So all right, that's fine. You didn't prepare. I didn't prepare today. That's fine. Uh, I forgot my. That I forgot my notebook. Your noon book. My notebook. Oh. Oh okay. Jesus Christ! They're going to inspect my notebook. I'm going to get a lower grade. I don't even have it. It sounds like now you're saying nut book. Eh. Uh, can I have some peanuts? Not that kind of nuts. All Are right. you going to eat your penis? What? <laughs> what did you say? On the plane. <laughs> Ew. Okay, you know what? Maybe you stop talking for a bit. Where's your beverage? <laughs> Ew. Okay. You know what? Where's your damn beverage, mister? I can't take it. Every time you, every time you open your mouth, an odd sound is coming out. <laughs> okay. Go get a beverage, please. Okay, no, I'm better now. No, you're not. It's okay now. You don't want a beverage of some sort. Wait a minute. I'm falling into a racial stereotype. Yeah, well, that also happens every show. Oh, okay, I'm better now. All right. No beverage? No beverage. Okay. Uh, Today's episode is all about... Bill Murray. Oh, okay. And Murray's brother. 
Okay, that could be true. They could be related. Uh, the top, each of our top five Bill Murray movies. Now, I'm right here. I'm right here. How you doing? It's nice to see you. What? I have my list here, oh. right next to me, my top five Bill Murray movies, and I will go from five to one, and I see that Dave does not have a I list. I have my list in my head. And let me tell you something about my list. Uh-huh. My list doesn't include a movie he made in the past 25 years, because... They all suck. Past they- anything past 1990, something happened in Bill Murray. He became actor for hire, uh, as well, opposed to uh, you know movie star with uh, taste. So I'm okay. I'm going to say that my movies fit in your same category of not in the past 25 years. However, I'd say that most of my movies have nothing to do with uh, an actor with taste. All right. Well, the name Coppola. <laughs> Comes to mind, and she's involved with a couple of stinkeroos. Okay, well, you know what? Let's let's <laughs> we're celebrating the movies we do mm-hmm. like. Okay, sweetie. Okay, mm-hmm, sweetie. Huh, sweetie. <laughs> okay, uh, that's uh, that's Nick Cage. That's Moonstruck. Thank it's not much. part Thank of this much. episode, but huh, sweetie. Okay, listen to me. Yeah, I'm listening to you. Oh, <laughs> well, that's that is excellent. So what I'm saying is that we are celebrating each of our top five Bill Murray movies and we are not uh, shit talking our our bottom five okay I just want to know one thing now if you had a if you had a choice now you could see your, your, your top five Bill Murray movies uh-huh and if you had a choice to substitute in one by Brian Doyle Murray would there be one that's worthy yeah. Now, is there a movie without Bill that Brian is in that's worthy? I think he does a lot of voiceover mm. stuff. Modern Problems. Oh. With Chevy Chase. Okay. I mean, uh, that's a pretty good one. But I'll tell you that there's the other Murray brother. John. Uh, is it John? I don't know. There's a few of them. It's like a younger one. Yes. And he was in a movie. Uh, he Pat, was. In, Patrick? I don't know. He was in a movie. It's some sort of zany <laughs> cop movie. All right. I want some quiet here. We've got a film to show you, but you're not going to see it. Because you people are without a doubt the worst drivers in the world. And your moving violations prove it. You will not get your licenses back until you pass this course in our traffic school. Never be able to make it. None of them will. You think we're finished? Washed up? History? Well, I've got news for you. It's not over till it's over. Every one of you is a menace. Come on! You're reckless. Oh my god, I'm three minutes late for my pills. You're undisciplined. This has totally ruined sex for me for the rest of my life. I'll get you, you little whip. But worst of all, you have no respect for authority. Moving violations. If I were you, I'd get used to public transportation. As much as I love that movie, I will not... It is not worthy to be in these top five uh, Bill Murray movies. All right, I'm sorry. Let's get right to the point. What's your top... What's your fifth greatest Bill Murray movie? My number five? And this might be a shocker to you. Caddyshack. Welcome to the Bushwood Country Club. The membership's exclusive. You think I'd join this crummy snobatorium? The help is outrageous. What? The madness is contagious. Bad language, fooling around in the course, poor caddying. But this whole place... Caddyshack. 
starring Chevy Chase as Ty Webb. Who is that disgusting man over there? A sportsman who really knows how to score. So, what brings you to this uh, nape of the woods, neck of the wave? How come you're here? Rodney Dangerfield as Al Servant, a big shot. My dinghy's bigger than your whole boat! With an even bigger mouth. <laughs> Hey, somebody step on a duck. <laughs> Ted Knight as Judge Smales, a man of dignity <laughs> and a sense of fair play. I've sentenced boys younger than you to the gas chamber. Michael O'Keefe as Danny Noonan, a caddy who wants an education and gets one. You take drugs, Danny? Every day. Good. Cindy Morgan as Lacey Underall. She's got a bad reputation, and she's working hard to keep it. You want to tie me up with some of your ties? And Bill Murray as Carl Spackler. Uh, just a harmless squirrel, not a plastic explosive or anything. Nothing to be worried about. He's not crazy about gophers, <laughs> but he is crazy. License to kill gophers by the government of the United Nations. And introducing Mr. Gopher as himself. You got to give me a I said freeze, gopher! Caddyshack. It's all about swinging. Kiss me, you fool. But not on the course. Hey, you want to make $14 the hard way? Ah! Playing a good game. That's all he got out of that one. And talking a better one. Hey, I should have stayed home and played with myself. Taking shots. Ah! That was a bum shot. And making time. We couldn't possibly think less of each other. Controlling your drives. Wow! And losing your grip. Ah! It is! You! Out! Four. The man's a menace. Caddyshack. The comedy with... Shattycack. <clears throat> Caddyshack. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I, I would love to do that. Yeah, I know you would. Uh-huh. That's what she said. Mm. Now, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. This movie was not received well by the critics, yet it became a cult classic. Now, am I correct in that assumption? Uh, summary? I feel like it was panned by the critics. Let me see. I come from a show family. I, I know. I know business. The film was met with underwhelming reviews in its original release with oh. criticism towards the disorganized plot. Yeah. Though Dangerfield and Murray's comic performances were well received. Uh -huh. Roger Ebert gave the film two and a half stars out of four and wrote, Caddyshack feels more like a movie that was written rather loosely so that when shooting began, there was freedom, too much freedom, for it to wander off in all directions in search of comic inspiration. What an uptight cunt. Gene Siskel gave the film three out of four stars, saying it was funny about half of the time it tries to be, which is pretty good average for a comedy. Whoa, what a dick. Dave Kerr, for the Chicago Reader, wrote, The first time director Harold Ramis can't hold it together. Whoa, the picture, harsh out, man. The picture lurches from style to style, including some ill-placed whimsy with a gopher puppet and collapses somewhere between sitcom and <coughs> sketch farce. Well, I was correct. It was uh, met with a lackluster reception. Uh, right now, it currently holds a 73% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, see, this is one that gained steam over time. Became a cult classic. It is a cult classic. What a time. Yeah. I, okay. I do recall Chevy Chase was was uh, was well regarded at the time this movie was made. And Chevy Chase has really turned face in the public eye. He was once beloved, and now he is a troublemaker. You know, now he's a guy you get, he gets pulled over on the highway and you don't recognize him. I will say that just uh, being, just observing cancel culture in these past, say, five or ten years, uh, and having seen Buzzy Linhart, who I did a documentary on, get bad reviews or bad press because someone literally didn't like him or just for whatever reason, 
I, I'm going to give Chevy Chase a pass and say, you know what? He's not there to be your friend. He's there to entertain you in movies. Anything he does outside of that, yeah. as long as he's not marrying his stepdaughter, hey now, did he like do that? Woody Allen, no. Oh, hey, take it ish. Uh, his adopted daughter. So I, I would say anything outside of that. Oh, my God. Any any opportunity to bash the Jew. Yeah, that's pretty true. Uh, but I will also just All right, put Owen it, Benjamin, relax. I will put it this way. Um I'm all I'm all for Chevy Chase. All for him. He entertained the shit out of me in nearly everything he's been in. I like the chase. I got no problem with a Chev. Okay. So back to the reality of uh, Caddyshack. So that's your number five. Number eh? five. You know, and I would say that a lot of people will probably put that as their number one. Holy Cassandra Williams. But uh, I, I would not. I am. That is a firm number five. On my list. And what, number five on your list? Well, now we're doing like this. Well, I, I thought it was more of an abstract kind of approach. No, our to lists a list. are never abstract. Now they I are the numbers. Was sort of like, you know, flow. No. Uh, flow of uh, emotion. Nope. You have to have a definitive like red, gold, number green, five. That kind of thing. Does that make any sense to you? No, because I'm getting annoyed with you because every time we have a list show, you pull out this weird cosmic nonsense. All right. Here's my number five. Okay. Is it really number five? Or was um, it number four? I don't like you at all. How much for one nugget? What? How much for a soda? How much for a small soda? How much for just a little in my hand? How much just pour a little in my hand? Is he in that movie? What, Chris Rock? No, Bill Murray. No, I'm just going off here. I'm trying to stall. This is what I call stalling. This is a filibuster. Dave, it's a list of five. Oh, well, see, I just can't decide what's number one. Should we pause and let you put a, write down a list? All right, I got it. Okay. Yeah, my number five would have to be... All right, I just need a second. Oh, my God. I. You know what, Dave? Let's see. Do you want a piece of paper and a pen to write stuff down? All right, here's my number five. Oh, my God. Scri uh, stripes. You're a bum. And that's all you'll ever be. A bum. Are you stuck in a dead-end job? Personal problems got you down. You can't go. All the plants are going to die. I've lost my job, my apartment, my car, and my girlfriend. Well, the Army can turn your life around. Before I knew it, she was walking next to me. Singing to what did it, did it, did it, did it do. Join a whole new breed of professionals. Oh, my God, my mama. <laughs> Learn what it's like to feel like a man. Get your body into incredible shape. Master important career skills. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? This and this. <laughs> and represent your country in foreign lands. Chicago. <laughs> Good thing. So if you're a man who likes to take charge of your own life... You're different! You're weird! You're a mutant! You're a killer! You're a train killer! You're a lean, mean, violent machine! I'll do it! And this looks like your kind of challenge... So am I to understand that you men completed your training on your own? That's the fact, Jack! That's the fact, Jack! Oh, huh? Join the wackiest group dazzle, dazzle. that ever put on a uniform. Gentlemen, this is the EM-50 urban assault vehicle. And ride with them as they blunder across borders. Right, man, always get this thing moving. Come on. You're dangerous, you know that? All right, steady, steady, steady. We got one heavily unrecreational vehicle here, man. Oh, this is the 
This is interesting. Number five, Stripes. Stripes. Now, here's the thing in common with Stripes that is with Caddyshack. It also has Harold Ramis. Now, did he direct this one also? Directed by Ivan Reitman. Oh, right. Man. That reminds me of the worst movie I watched in a long time just the other day. And it was called Cannibal Girls. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, Stripes is a 1981 American war comedy. I love those. It's got Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Warren Oates, PJ Souls, Sean Young, and John Candy. Uh, also, John LaRiquette, John Deal, Conrad Dunn, and Judge Reinhold. It's got some very classic stuff in it. Joe Flaherty, Dave Thomas, Timothy oh, no. Busfield, and Bill Paxton. This is fucking, uh... <laughs> A star fest. It is pretty much a star fest. Honestly, the first half of it is is brilliant. The second half gets a little. It's like when they get tangled up with the girls, it gets a little uh, schmaltzy. Are you saying chicks ruin everything? Uh, the chicks in this one kind of water it down, but the first half of this movie is really great. If the whole movie was as good as the first half, then I would say that uh, it would have been better than number five. But. It's got some good classic stuff in it. It's got that uh, whole uh, sit down, Francis. I think that's the line. Now, any of you homos touch me and I'll kill you. Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> the whole thing where they're introducing themselves. Strip search at the border, that line. It's very, it's very funny stuff. Stripes was well received by critics and audiences. On review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 86%. Ooh, thank you. Now, this one I actually feel was received relatively well at the time of release. That's what I just said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do you listening at all? Yes, but I was just thinking, I was just wanting to confirm. That, that was my impression when I saw it. Roger Ebert praised it as an anarchic, uh, anarchic, anarchic, slob movie, a celebration of all that is irrelevant, reckless, foolhardy, undisciplined, and occasionally scatological. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a good, it was like a good movie, I thought. Like I said, it got a little watered at the end, but it was good. Uh, Gary Arnold from the Washington Post disagrees with you and says Stripe squanders at least an hour belaboring situations contradicted from the outset by Murray's personality. Right. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. It got a little weird at the end. The premise and star remain out of whack until the rambling, diffuse screenplay finally struggles beyond basic training. No, they're saying, you said you liked the beginning? Yeah. And like then the, it gets bad in the end. Yeah. He's saying, I don't like the beginning. The he likes the end, though. That's absurd. That's what I'm saying. That's the Washington Post. Yeah, we all know about them. All righty. All right. So that's that. Let's go on to your number four. Let's just skip right ahead. Boom. Do you have any stories about Stripes you want to... Did you go and see it with Colin? No, the whole lot on there. Stop dropping names, man. <coughs> uh... Uh, well, first of all, a Caddyshack, back to Caddyshack, I feel like that was definitely a summer movie. Yeah. Now, was Stripes also a summer movie, or was that a winter movie? I almost feel like that came out in the winter. Well, you would be wrong, because Stripes was released on June 26th, 1981. Well, there you go. Okay. So, I have no stories about that. <laughs> Nothing back in... Did you see it I in the movies? I think I saw it. Uh, yeah. I don't remember. I must have seen it uh, with uh, some sort of... I don't know. I, I can't remember. Next! Caddyshack was released on July 25th, 1980. So it was just the year before. 
Uh huh. Um, ah, the good old days. I don't think I saw that in the theater. Caddyshack? I think it was R, so I don't think I was able to see it. I, I was recall too young. seeing it. In the theater? Yeah. In 1980? I think so. I also saw like Animal House back then. And oh, you did? I saw. Uh, in the theater? Who took you? Your parents took you? Yeah, the Animal House. Yep. I saw that with my parents and my brother and sister. Oh, uh, see, I was an it was only. Fucking, the whole audience was whooping it up. Let me tell you something. The audience was going crazy during fucking uh, Animal, Animal House. House. Yep. That's just hysterical. And you know what the audience was also going crazy during was uh, Fast Times at Richmond High when I saw that in the theater. Yeah, I think that was 84-ish. I think yeah, I did see that. The audience was freaking out in that. I think it might be a year before that, though, maybe. Or even 82. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. That's all right. I, uh, maybe I didn't see that in the theater then. I don't know. Uh I'm trying to see. I didn't see many R-rated movies before I was allowed to. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I don't. I, I, I'm trying to even remember. I think the first R movie I saw, like out with friends, was like American Werewolf in London or something. Like somehow they let us in. I remember seeing that. And I was underage, but they let us in anyway or something. Yeah. That was a big get. All right. The special effects in that one were, were grand. They are. Oh, it scared the shit. I, it just scared the shit out of me. Um, all right. We're on to my number four. Is that correct? Mm hmm My number four is Kingpin. <laughs> From the idiots that brung you dumb and dumber. You wouldn't happen to have a Phillips head screwdriver, would you? He's the man with the rubber hand. Oh, creepy. He's the Amish kid with the golden arm. Whoa! <laughs> you could be a champion. I'm just not interested. You suck! Now, these two pinheads will teach each other you just feel it? Oh. about life in the fast lane. You're about to embark on a great adventure. Does anyone else want one? No, oh, I'll take a couple jugs. Woody Harrelson, what have you been doing all these years? Drinking. Randy Quaid. This is pretty good fun for only $2.99 a minute. Vanessa Angel. Get your hands off me. And Big Bad Bill Murray. <laughs> On July 26th. Watch the door. Get your mind in the gutter. I will pay you $1 million to sleep with your friend here. Kingpin. <laughs> Are you still drinking? No, 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 no. I, I don't. That's that's behind me now. I just. Why are you buying? King Ping, King Ping. But the my number four is King Ping. Is it? What do you think? It can be. It's okay. Oh, I that was just before. Uh, King Ping. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we saw that one together. Kingpin is a 1996 American sports comedy film directed by Peter and Bobby Farrelly and written by Barry Fanaro and Mort Nathan, starring Woody Harrelson, Randy Quaid, Vanessa Angel, and, of course, Bill Murray. It tells the story of an alcoholic ex-professional baller, Harrelson, who becomes the manager for a promising Amish talent, Quaid. It was filmed in and around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as a stand-in for Scranton. Uh, released on July 26, 1996. Well, there you go. This movie is... I, I just... First of all, I love bowling. I personally love bowling. Like, when I was in high school, I was on a bowling team. Like, I love bowling. Do you know that? Yes. So... Um, right away I'm going to love this movie but <clears throat> Randy Quaid is so perfect in this everyone is perfect in this every little nuanced thing is makes you just laugh your ass off right? the rubber hand the bad hairdo right? it's just all ridiculous and it's Bill Murray is such man. a douchebag in this he's such a dick it's great I love it. I can't get enough of this movie. And on Didn't top... Didn't this movie coin a term? Which term? 
pull a mulligan or something? No. What mulligan is, is from golf. Oh, it's this one? I don't know what you're What's saying. his name? What's the character's name in this one? Um. What's Bill Murray's character's name? <laughs> Ernie McCracken? <laughs> okay, I guess I'm mistaken. Never mind. You mean the, uh, Woody Harrelson's name was Munson? <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. Never oh, mind. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes gives this film 50% approval rating. Look out, everybody. There's a shitstorm coming. It's... Uh, That's what, what Randy Quaid says at one point. Roger Ebert... Roger Ebert had one of the most noteworthy positive reviews, giving it three and a half out of four stars. Gene Siskel also endorsed the film, putting it on his list of the ten best films for 1996. Uh, I think this movie is a nine. I think it's hysterical. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd have to agree with you on that. It's very funny. Blues Travelers in it as well. That's I was going to say, that's the, that's the, every, you know, you love the movie 100%. And then for me also, being a huge Blues Traveler fan, to have them singing at the end during the credits was uh, amazing. Quite but anyway, amazing. but anyway, there's a song that they're singing at the end. You're not a huge Blues Traveler fan. Yeah, it's for sure. I am. All right. So that was my number four. Are you saying that was your number four? That was my number four, basically. It's, you know, it's four or three. Let's just make it four so we can move on. Oh. Because at some point it's going to take up the same. It's one of mine. I'm going to say it's number four. Could be number three, though. All right. Are you ready for my number three? I'm going to say it's number four. Yeah, let's go on to your number three. I'm taking a mulligan. <laughs> okay. My, uh, I, I don't know. I hope my number three is not the same as yours. I don't think it will be. Okay. My number three is Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Day! Groundhog time. A thousand people freezing their butts off waiting to worship a rat. Weatherman Phil Connors. <laughs> is spending the day in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Phil? Ned! Ned Ryerson, I did the whistling belly button trick at the high school talent show. Bing! Bing! But Phil's about to find out. He's not just stuck in Puxatawney. Will you be checking out today, Mr. Connors? Chance of departure today, 100%. He's stuck... <laughs> in Groundhog Day. I'm reliving the same day over. Bill? Ned Ryerson? Bang! Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Well, it's Groundhog Day. Again? At first, he was a little anxious. Bill? What? Will you be checking out today, Mr. Connors? I'd say the chance of departure is 80%. But now... We could do whatever we want. <laughs> He's discovering the possibilities. Don't you worry about cholesterol? Why? And living life mm. like there's Phil? no tomorrow. Phil Connors! Ned! Because there isn't. I am an immortal. I have been stabbed, shot, burned, frozen, electrocuted. I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god. He's out of his gourd. But to get what his heart wants most. What are you looking for, Phil? A date for the weekend? Means living this day over again <laughs> till he gets it right. Believe it or not, I studied 19th century French poetry. <laughs> what a waste of time. I studied 19th century French poetry. La fille qui j'aime You speak French. Oui. Bill Murray. Andy McDowell. To the groundhog. I always drink to world peace. Well, what should we drink to? I like to say a prayer and drink to world peace. Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. <laughs> he might be okay. Yes! Life has a funny way of repeating itself. What did you do today? Oh, same old, same old. All right. 
Fair enough. Um, I love Andy McDowell. I think she is a one of uh, America's sweethearts. Um, she's so great in this movie, and he, of course, is great in this movie. I also love time travel, and this is kind of time travel. So we've got basically everything I need for a movie, really. What? what Let's put it this way. If it's got time travel, I'm going to love it anyway. But time travel, Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, I'm all in. Anyway, uh, Groundhog Day is a 1993 American fantasy comedy uh, directed by Harold Ramis and written by Ramis and Danny Rubin. It stars Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, and Chris Elliott. Murray uh, portrays Phil Connor. Murray portrays Phil Connors, a cynical TV weatherman covering the annual Groundho- Groundhog Day event in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, and he becomes trapped in a time loop, forcing him to relive February second repeatedly. Uh, I guess there was speculation about just how much time he he was in the time loop, mm-hmm. and uh, apparently. I guess it's about 10 years, people are saying. 10 years is what people are honing in on. Because he had to learn how to ice sculpture. He had to learn how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. He had to learn a lot of things. Speak languages. All of this other stuff. So, I'd say that's the consensus. 10-ish years, basically. I guess I never thought about it. I guess... uh, Oh, here, they, and Wikipedia says, Ramis once said that he believed the film took place over 10 years. Crazy. He, he said that it takes at least 10 years to become good at an activity, such as Phil learning ice sculpting and to speak French, and allotting for the downtime and misguided years he spent. It had to be maybe like 30 or 40 years. Okay, so at first he said 10, and then he rethought it. Yeah, Ramus was never in SNL, was he? Um, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know actually. Um, somebody else has figured out that since it takes ten thousand hours of study to become an expert in a field, and given the number of loops seen, oh mentioned, man, come on, that's not that's that's not necessarily so. Mentioned on the screen how long Phil could spend per day studying, Phil spent approximately 12,400 days or nearly 34 years trapped. So there you go. Um, Let's see what the... This is not supposed to be thought of so deeply. Uh, Groundhog Day received generally positive reviews from critics. Um, Cinema Score polls reported that moviegoer, moviegoers gave it an average rating of B+. I would give this one a 9 as well. I'd give it a B+. You would? Yeah. I would say that at least uh, all of these on my list are at least a 9, with maybe 1 and 2 being 10s, for me anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's my number three, Groundhog Day. Do you have a number three, David? I have a number three. I knew it wouldn't be Groundhog Day. Mine is, uh, Dragon Meat Phoenix, number three. Dragon Meat Phoenix? You know what that is? Don't look it up. It's number three. It's Chinese dish. Dragon Meat Phoenix is, <sighs> what would that be? Lobster and... Fish or something? Shrimp? I I guess I've never had it. Steak and... ah, It's one of those corny Chinese dishes. Now seriously, my number three is Where the Buffalo Roam. Hidden deep within the snow-shrouded Rockies, a fearsome creature is now awake and hungry. Ah! Come, Rocco, he's mine! Get a 
grip, Thompson. He is gathering his awesome powers for one final assault upon an unsuspecting world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meet Dr. Hunter S. Thompson, the legendary outlaw journalist. What are you doing? These answers. If you what? did. Yeah, okay. okay. Great answers, huh? What? 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 What do you want to know? Where am I? You're at your hotel, man. They broke the mold before he was born. Uh. Bill Murray is the outrageous, the infamous, the totally glorious Dr. Hunter S. Thompson. You know, I, I hate to advocate drugs or liquor, violence, insanity to anyone. But in my case, it's worked. <laughs> Where the Buffalo Roam is a 1980 American semi-biographical comedy film which loosely depicts author Hunter S. Thompson's rise to fame in the 1970s and his relationship with Chicano attorney and activist Oscar Zeta Acosta. A Chicano attorney and activist. The film was produced and directed by Art Linson. Bill Murray portrayed the author and Peter Boyle portrayed Acosta who was referred to in the film as Carl Laszlo Esquire. Gonzo, man. Uh, the movie's fucking brilliant, okay? Is it? I've never it, seen it. It's very out there. Uh, well, let's just put it this way. Bill Murray's um, interpretation of Hunter S. Thompson is really great. He's totally kind of kind of has it, and it's actually like... The character has a little bit of the quality of the uh, caretaker from Caddyshack. It's a little bit like that meets like a little bit more of a, I don't know, Hunter S, I guess. You know, it's been so long since I've seen it. Tell me something about it. <clears throat> I, I certainly will. The remind film, me. What? Remind me. The film opened on April 25th, 1980 in 400... This was more of an alternative film. This came out... It was just like... This wasn't like a main, mainstream thing. Right. I gotcha. Yeah. Like an East Village. This was no Ghostbusters. I gotcha. Uh, it has been panned critically for being a series of bizarre episodes strung together rather than having a cohesive central plot. Well, that's part of it, you know? That's that's the acid nature of it. And let me ask you something. Did they say the same thing about uh, Johnny Depp's uh, interpretation of Hunter S? Because that also is very out there. And a brilliant film. What's that one called? That one is called Fe Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, that's a really, that's a really original title, the guys. Yeah. Uh, they, really, <laughs> they really took something there. Anyway, uh, movie historian Leonard Maltin remarked that even Neil Young's music score can't save this dreadful comedy, which will baffle those who aren't familiar with Hunter S. Thompson's work and insult those who are. Now, who said that? Your friend, Leonard Maltin. He's not my friend. I know. You know what he is? <laughs> what all, wait, <laughs> I feel like someone... That guy's famous for like being a fuddy... Uptight duddy. Dude, you always hate whatever he says. That's why I said your friend, but that apparently you fag. forgot that. All right. I don't know if that's true. Film critic Roger Ebert gave Where the Buffalo Roam two stars out of four and said, the movie, fe the movie fails to deal convincingly, convincingly with either Thompson's addiction or with his friendship <laughs> with Laszlo. However, what? Why would it deal with his addiction? <clears throat> what, are, what are you... <laughs> However, what is this, scared straight. Hey, Hunter, come here. I want you to talk to these uh, ex cons. Ebert also noted that this is the kind of bad movie that's almost worth seeing. You know what's worth seeing? His fucking jaw fall off. Oh, David, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> that's devilish. Fuck him. Don't say that. Fuck that ghoulie motherfucker. Gene Siskel awarded two and a half Jealous stars. Jealous much? You see the shit? Did you see the dreck that he wrote? Gene Siskel awarded two and a half stars out of four and declared that Murray is fine at playing an angry clown, but where the Buffalo Roam should have given us much more than that. These guys get paid to be dicks. There's nothing I in wish the I could get paid to be myself. There's nothing in the film that would make anyone want to read Hunter Thompson's words, 
And that's a critical failure for a movie about a writer. Everybody I know who saw the movie thought it was fucking great, okay? So fuck yourself. There's only a couple parts where it gets shitty. The shitty part of the movie is when he starts <coughs> hanging out with all the kids and they go in the, uh, uh, in the court scene. That's shitty. There's some brilliant funny stuff in that movie, so the go f- fuck yourself. The film review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes lists the film as rotten with a 17% favorable rating among critics. Well, go fuck yourself. Let me tell you one thing. I have one out here. Like I said, I haven't seen it in a long time, so it could be one of those where I just, as a 15-year-old, it was good. But maybe, you know, I have a feeling I still would like it. Thompson hated the film, saying... Who's Thompson? Hunter S. Thompson... That guy's nobody. ...hated the film, saying he liked Murray's performance, but that he was very disappointed in the script. It sucks. A bad, dumb, low-level, low-rent script. That's probably true. Years later, Murray reflected on the film. I rented a house in L.A. with a guest house that Hunter lived in. I'd work all day and stay up all night with him. I was strong in those days. I took on another persona, and that was tough to shake. I still have Hunter in me. All right, see? I think it was a good movie, and I'm sticking by it. (laughs) That's fine. I just wanted to give you uh, all Me the... and Bill Murray think it was good. <laughs> Bill, that sounds like Bill <coughs> liked his work. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I might need a beverage, to be honest. All right, so that's my number three. Go ahead. <clears throat> Everybody shit on my number three. I, I need a Keep beverage. Keep it up. I'll pass on number two if you're not <clears throat> fucking careful. What? Huh? Sorry. I gotta get myself a beverage. All right. Okay, are you ready for my number two? Oh, your number two, yes. My number two favorite Bill Murray movie is Meatballs. You saw what he did to Saturday night. Now watch Bill Murray demolish summer. See, 300 kids from the city escape to the woods for a summer of wholesome fun in the sun. I'm the program director, Jerry Aldini. Is that a bra you're wearing, or are you expecting an assassination attempt? The real excitement, of course, is going to come at the end of the summer. During Sexual Awareness Week, we import 200 hookers from around the world, and each camper, armed with only a thermos of coffee and $2,000 cash, tries to visit as many countries as he can. And the winner, of course, is named King of Sexual Awareness Week. You'll be cheering for Bill Murray this summer in Meatballs. Me the barge. I think you didn't like this movie. What? No, oh, wait. You don't like the movie Rudy. This has a character named Rudy. That's what confuses me. You're referring to Christopher Makepeace. Hey, I'll make peace with anybody you want, but I still think you don't like the movie. I love this movie. You are wrong. Meatballs is a 1979 Canadian-American comedy film directed by Ivan Reitman. Hey, that guy directs a lot of right wing movies. It... It is noted for Bill Murray's first film appearance. She have a sister too. In a starring role and for launching the directing career of Reitman, whose later comedies included Stripes and Ghostbusters. Did both, he also direct Animal House? Both starring Murray. The film also introduced teenage actor Chris Makepeace in the role of Rudy Gurner. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Uh, the film was the highest grossing Canadian film in the United States of all time and also in Canada. Let me ask you something. Okay. Did this movie come out in 1979? Yes. I remember seeing this movie in the theater when it came out, and it was pretty goddamn happening. Now, this movie kind of won America, Bill Murray over to America. It this was, movie um, made America love Bill Murray. Yes. It, uh, this is uh, released on June 29th, 
79. Uh, people like Bill Murray who knew him from Saturday Night Live, but this brought him to the mainstream. This made kids love Bill Murray. Review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes gives the film a score of 72%. Oh, how are you going to score any higher, man? What is it going to take to get higher than... Uh, what? Meatballs is more than 72%. 72% of what? Meatballs is a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, uh, see, I can't... This list is terrible because we share some common things here. <clears throat> you and I? Yeah, what if this was my number two? That's fine. What if it was my number one? That's fine, Then the too. whole game's out the window. Dave. David. Huh? No, if this is your number two or your number one, that's fine. All right. Stop it. You wait and see. I'm going to steal your number one. I don't want... steal your number one right after my you. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, my number one was on your top uh, five movies of all time list, so... Oh, we all know what my number one is. It must be yours, too. It is, but... Dave. What about that? I don't want you moving your list around I to accommodate some... I don't even have a list. <sighs> I do too. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune gave the film two and a half stars out of four and stated that it is pleasant as can be. Two and a half stars. But there's hardly a belly laugh in it. What the... That man needs a blowjob. Murray plays a nice guy counselor who befriends a lonely camper. It's all very sweet, but funny... Not particularly. What do you want him to do, man? Uh, that, oh, hold on a second. Yeah. And never mind. Jack Kroll of Newsweek remarked that this film has almost none of the scraggy, raunchy, irre uh, irreverent anarchy that gave Animal House a kind of perverse anti-style. There's nothing at all perverse about meatballs. In fact, it's so cutesy, squeaky clean that it becomes Andy Hardy with a few extra belches. So who likes the movie? Me! Who it's my it number the two. The, I felt like the critics did like this movie. They did not like the movie at the time. I think the Rotten Tomatoes uh, film... It's nonsense, nonsense. I think the Rotten Tomatoes score of 72 is based on... Uh, more recent reviews. Now, what came first? This or Little... What's it called? Little Virgins? Little Darlings? Little, okay, it was not Little Virgins. <laughs> That's that disgusting. Uh oh I love that movie, Little Virgins. Mm -mm. Christy... Christy McGinley. Christy what? What? What's her name? Christy McNichol? Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> Christy McGinley. McGinley? I don't know. That's Ted McGinley to you. <laughs> little Darlings. Ah, uh, yes, now. That's a movie I can get behind. Why? Because <laughs> it's got... Did it have Matt Damon in it? Oh, okay. Or it Scott has... Bale. One of those two was in it. It's Tatum O'Neill, Christy McNichol, one of my little celebrity crushes, Armand DeSante, and your celebrity crush, Matt Dillon. Yeah, it, this is no... Te you know, this was when after I saw Tex, I realized there could never be another movie so good as Tex. <laughs> okay, I don't know what uh, you're talking about. How come about? they're not remaking Tex? Is all I'm saying. That's touching. That movie was touching. Tex. Okay, this just, is okay. Just look at the the is poster this, for Tex. Is this the one with the hat on the bed thing? No, that, that's that's George Star Cowboy. Oh, okay. Tex is the one where he has a. Uh, button down shirt open. Who? He's, Matt Dillon? His chest sticking out. <laughs> okay. Are you gay? Tex. No. I'm just trying to remember what I remember about Tex. Okay. Well, you know, some, they smoke some weed in Tex. And it's. Got us some problems. I <laughs> Someone was selling dope, you see. Uh -huh. Tex got him in the wrong. <laughs> Tex got him in the wrong crowd, man. <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so Tex was one of one of us. Is yeah. it meaning you and your friends who I apparently I can't name drop? Tex was a good guy, man. <laughs> but he got in with the wrong crowd. If you can see how red Dave is right now. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's some funny shit. See, this is the thing. Dave likes when they get in with the wrong crowd because all of a sudden they're his people. Hey, mm -hmm. you know what another good movie is? Mm -mm. 
Over the Edge. Okay, you know what, Dave? Matt Dillon's also in that one. Okay, you know what? You have a weird love. I like Over the Edge. Mm-hmm. Well, I like Close to the Edge. I like The River's Edge. Okay. Well, that's not that's a little different. You're a little that's edge Keanu. happy. Uh, I'm going to Number say... Number one Keanu movie, Over the Edge. <gasps> ah, The River's Edge. Over the Edge, not Keanu. Number one Keanu movie, for me, as a woman... The Matrix. It's the lake house. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's the lake house. We got we got Keanu, we've got Sandra Bullock, and we've got time travel. It's the motherfucking lake house. Yeah, it's terrible, man. Yeah. Well, you know what? You, you brought it up. You want time travel, I guess go Bill and Ted at least. Let's take it each. Uh, I like Bill and Ted too. It's in my uh, top ten, I'd say. All right. God damn it. I also like permanent record. I wanted to tell you the story of text, but I got too fucking laughy about it. Yeah, man. because I don't know. You think it's funny that he got in with the wrong crowd. No, they, they sold his horse. No, his dad sold his horse. His well, dad's no good. Well, Tex was rebelling. All right, but you know what? You know what? Tex has nothing to do with. I see. If Tex uh-huh. was a Bill Murray movie, everybody would, everybody would be talking about it. All right. So you don't want to know about Tex. I have, I, you know what? I don't want to know about Tex in the least bit. I would like to know your number two. Well, thank you, because I think you're number one. <laughs> what? Stupid. Stop it, you oh. nut. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my number two is... I already said stripes. Oh my God! Oh, uh, I'm not gonna steal. It's not stealing. You can my have... number two uh. is not gonna steal from you because it's really my number one. So wait, my number two is. I told you to write this shit down. Oh, it's not screws. Why not? I like it. You almost said Scrooge was your number five. <clears throat> Scrooge. You, see, you almost said Scrooge before, and then you changed it. How about Ghostbusters? You don't like that? I'm asking, Dave, okay. This is what it is. Each of us have a top five. Uh, the the we Raisin's give, Edge. I, I give oh, my top edge. five. That might be the worst one. And you give your top five. Uh, I've given my top five because I've written down I'm just here. trying to think if there's a gem I'm missing out on here. Well, you know what? It would have taken very little research. It would have behooved me to... That's what you say. Use the word behooved. Actually, and you don't even need research. If you're a fan, you should know these movies should be in your I mind. I am a fan. Uh-huh. I am a fan of Murray. Okay. You're number two, David. I uh, remind you that you had Stripes. You had uh, Where the Buffalo Roam. And now... Uh, what was your number three? Oh, your number three was the same as my three. Wait, no. You're f- Wait, what? What was the same? Kingpin. Okay, that was my number four. I see. So you have Stripes, Kingpin, Kingpin. and Where the Buffalo Roam, and your number two. Well, I would have to say it's Root, then. Seven o'clock, Psycho sees Santa's workshop, and only Lee Majors yes. can stop them. In the night, the reindeer die. Be here. You can't show that commercial. That thing looked like a, the, the Manson family Christmas special. Think I'm way off base? Yes, you're, you, well, you're a tad off base, sir. Frank Cross is more than the youngest network president in television history. Call security. Have them change his locks and toss him out of the building. Oh. He's fired? It's Christmas. Thank you. Call the county. Stop his bonus. I'll watch out. Ah! He's a thoughtful boss. Thanks, boys. Get the nurse. A generous brother. What did he give you last year? Uh, I don't remember. A shower curtain. Did you hear him? I think you dropped something here. And a true humanitarian. I can't get the antlers glued onto this little guy. We've tried crazy glue. Have you tried staples? But his life is about to change. Woo! That was a good one. You 
are going to be visited by three ghosts tomorrow at noon. Yeah, tomorrow's bad for me, Lou. As a matter of fact, the whole rest of the week is a washout. Ow. Anyone who thinks he hates Christmas is wrong. <laughs> It's ghosts he hates. <laughs> I love that bit! <laughs> I'm the ghost of Christmas presents. <laughs> Bill Murray. <laughs> Karen Allen. It sounded like you'd seen a ghost. A ghost? John Forsythe. <laughs> Bobcat Goldthwaite. Hey! You want to see me, or is this a shotgun in your pocket? <laughs> you know this one? Everybody knows this one. Let's go now. Yeah, does everybody know this one? <laughs> Carol Kane. <laughs> Robert Mitchum. I really care. David Johansson. Oh, I'm having the weirdest day. See Bill Murray get Scrooged. Hey, back off, big man. That may work with the checks, but not with me. Scrooged. Scrooged is a 1988 American Christmas comedy film directed by Richard Donner and written by Mitch Glazer and Michael O'Donohue. Yeah. Uh, it's now. a modern retelling of, of course, uh, A Christmas Carol. <clears throat> this one's a little bit more exciting to me than uh, Groundhog Day. Okay, why is that? I don't know, it's just got a little more action, a little more, like, goofy craziness going on. David Johansson as the cab driver. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Miles Davis is in the movie. It's a huge, huge cast. The cast is ridiculous. Ghostwife. Bobcat Ghostwife. Oh, I, I don't know why you're saying it like that. How do you say his name? It's Bobcat Goldthwaite. Goldthwaite? That's right. Uh, who, 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 who's the, who, ha, what? It probably means something. Goldthwaite? Right? Goldthwaite. Yeah, okay. In America, we don't, we don't use words like thwaite. <laughs> it might mean something, you weirdo. Th- wait a second, I got to ask you a uh, question. Okay. The only people okay. who says thwaite mm-hmm. is Mike Tyson. Uh-huh. Thwaite a minute. Okay. Pre-release audience screenings in summer of 1988 were positive. <laughs> Positive what? With 93% of those surveyed rating the film as very good. Uh, Press screenings nearer to release, however, were met with responses ranging from ovations to disgruntlement. (laughs) Roger Ebert called it one of the most disquieting, unsettling films to come along (laughs) in quite some time. But let me tell you something. The one thing that's the one problem with the movie is... Yeah. They go a little too far with the shotgun and the gold thwait. Saying that it portrays pain and anger more than comedy. That's probably why you don't like it. Um, you know what? I don't, I, I have, I'm weird with movies. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't like it, but. I'm a big fan of Christmas in general, as you may already know, and uh, I like the telling of the original story. But this is a little, this is a little darker t- mm-hmm. retelling of the story. Well, then you'll have to wait and see how Kevin Hart does. I'm not interested at all, and I don't want to see a remake. I don't, I don't. If I was going to like one, it would be this one because I do like Bill Murray, and like I said, I like a lot of the people that are in the cast. It's just um, sometimes movies, things <laughs> that happen in movies, make me uh, anxious. You know, especially if you know the story and you know th- the way things are going, I get anxious. Like uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I almost was having a full-out meltdown watching that movie into the last ten minutes. I was literally having a physical reaction so sometimes movies just hit me the wrong way um and i'm not entertained as much as i'm anxiety ridden and that's kind of what happens sometimes so yeah it's me i'm crazy i know definitely don't watch tex 
I, I hear he gets in with the wrong people. <laughs> yeah, the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd. I mean, like there's this this show Yellowstone that people love. Somebody uh, I was playing a game with uh, in Tara was like, oh, you got to watch Yellowstone. The first f- five minutes of the first episode were such a turn off to me that I could never watch the whole, I would never watch a minute more of it. So it's, I'm easily turned off by things uh, like that. So, sorry. I don't love Scrooged, but it, I, it, the fact that it's your, is it your number two, you said? Yeah, I would say so. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's fine. It's fine. You know, Yeah. Eh. Dude, eh. you you should be more sure of your number two than your number five, honestly. Yeah, that's rough. Okay. I feel like when I, in all sincerity, when I say, Dave, let's do a top five, let's do a top <coughs> ten, you need to just... I got five I can work with. I just can't pin it down so well. I need you to pin it down. I need you to make a decision and say, okay, this is my definitive list. All right. So I, assessment. I will say that we've probably done 20 or 30 top five or 10 shows. And this is what happens every time. I know what my number one is. But it's my turn. Oh. Is your number one the same as my number one? Uh, probably. All right. Well, my number one Bill Murray movie of all time. What? About Bob. <laughs> there are two types of people in this world those who like Neil Diamond and those who don't what is the crisis Bob my ex-wife loves him just when patient Bob Wiley was making progress Dr. Marvin you can help me Dr. Leo <laughs> Marvin was making other plans as of this afternoon I'm taking my family on vacation until Labor Day but Leo's vacation Dr. is about to become Bob's therapy. Oh, I really appreciate this. I do not see patients on vacation ever. We just gotta figure out a way to work around your schedule. Two to four, three to five, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't want any of you letting Bob into this house. He's a sweet guy. Could we invite Bob over for dinner? Would you like some more chicken, Bob? Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, Faye, this is so scrumptious. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Will you stop that, please? Now, while Bob is getting better... <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm a schizophrenic, and so am I. <laughs> Leo is taking a turn for the worse. Oh, you're angry. No, I don't get angry. <laughs> well, you're upset. <laughs> Take a vacation. I'm on vacation! Touchstone Pictures presents Bill Murray. Hello, I'm Bob. Would you knock me out, please? And Richard Dreyfus. Don't you understand? This man is crazy! In a totally insane comedy. You've turned a perfectly peaceful house into an insane asylum! Get out! Why'd you need to kick Bob out of the house? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? What about Bob? What are you doing with a rifle? Death therapy, Bob. It's a guaranteed cure. (laughs) Is that your number one? Yeah. I mean, come on. I think so. Unless there's something I'm missing, which I don't think there is. Well, you said Ghostbusters. That's like a one. That's good. It's nice and campy. What About Bob is a 1991 American comedy (coughs) film directed by Frank Oz and starring Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfuss. Murray plays Bob Wiley, an irritating patient who follows his egotistical psychiatrist, Dr. Leo Marvin, on vacation. When the unstable Bob befriends the other members of Dr. Leo's family, it pushes the doctor over the edge. I would say that Bob is not irritating. Uh, I don't say, I, I don't know. I just, he's endearing in a really, uh, I don't think he's, uh, I'm not agreeing with Wikipedia what they're saying, but, um, I like the little kid when he's talking about death. 
Oh, God. the whole movie is... <laughs> dude, everybody's so fucking great in this movie. It's... The, when when Bob teaches the little kid to swim after after Dr. Leo Marvin has been trying all summer and maybe even years and then he sees him dive off the board the the dock and Dreyfus comes just running out. I'll take it from here, Bob. I'll take it from here. It's just fucking hysterical. And and then just when Bob is tied to the boat I'm sailing. I'm sailing. Every bit of that movie, every second of that movie is is pure joy for me anyway. And I give this movie a 10 without reservation. Do you right. give it a 10? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much a 10. I, mean, I can't see what, why not. <clears throat> it says here, uh, what about Bob was a financial... It's got puppets. Yes, it's got the puppets. It's got it's got everything. Um, what about Bob was a financial success? It was made for thirty nine million dollars and grossed sixty four million domestically. Um, and critical reaction was also favorable. Rotten Tomatoes gives the score the film a score of eighty four percent. And Siskel and Ebert reviewed the film, and Roger Ebert gave the film a thumbs up praising the different performances of Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfuss on screen together, as well as most of this film's humor. He said it was Bill Murray's best movie since Ghostbusters. Gene Siskel gave it a thumbs down <coughs> and felt that Murray gave a very funny and enjoyable performance in the film, but was rather upset by the Dreyfuss character and his angry and arrogant behaviors. <laughs> He felt it would have been funnier if Dreyfus had not been given such an angry performance in the film and said that Dreyfus ultimately ruined the film for him. <laughs> Dreyfus is hysterical. That's wrong with him. Leonard Maltin gave the film a favorable, favorable review. Um, he gave it three stars out of four, saying it's a very funny outing with Murray and Dreyfus approaching the relationship of the Roadrunner and the Coyote. He faulted the film only for its ending, which he found very abrupt and silly. Uh, the ending. What happens exactly at the end? Uh, Leo Marvin has to go to the crazy house that he tried to put Bill Murray into, and uh. Bill Murray marries Leo Marvin's sister. So he becomes related to Leo Marvin. They are now brothers-in-law. He is part of the family. Oh. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about the ending. Well, but he goes crazy because he tries to kill Bob, remember? He straps him with dynamite and C4 and leaves him in the middle of the woods. And Bob thought this was part of his, like, his therapy. Oh, okay. Uh, he was in Tootsie. Is that one that you missed? Son of a bitch. Was that one of the been on your list? He was a minor character, though. Well, I like Tootsie. Fucking like the movie Tootsie, then, don't I? I guess so. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors? Well, it's good in that too, isn't it? Annie. Annie. What? Annie, good in that one too, then, Annie. He's good in that one too, Annie. Annie. Annie? Annie. Annie. Ain't he? Ain't he? Ain't he? Ain't he? Annie. He's good in that one too, Annie. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what else we got? We got Wild Things. That's terrible. I don't even know what that is. The Man Who Knew Too Little. That's not enough. Space Jam. Terrible. Larger Than Life. I bet they don't even mention Garfield. Ed Wood. Oh, that's a good one. That's quite a good one. I would not even think of it as a Bill Murray movie. Mad Dog and Glory. I like Mad Dog and Hooch. Quick Change. I don't know what that is. Ghostbusters 2. That's all right. She's having a baby. Doesn't make him a bad guy. Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, that's a good one. The Razor's Edge. That's fucking atrocious. BC Rock. I don't know what that is. Nothing Lasts Forever. I never heard of that. Loose Shoes. That sounds bad. Tarzan, Shame of the Jungle. Oh, We're God. into this old shit that uh, no one will ever see. Um... Uh, Cradle Will Rock, Charlie's Angels, Rushmore, 
That's where he started taking the turn for the worse. Rushmore? Yeah. Uh, Hamlet, Osmosis Jones. <laughs> Speaking of sex. The, oh, the Royal Tenenbaums. That's where he took a turn for the worse too, isn't it? I like the Royal Tenenbaums. That's all right. Uh, Lost in Translation, I think, is where he starts taking the There we go. Now that's a done trodden one. Garfield, The Life Aquatic with Ugh. Steve Zissou. Uh, uh, Broken Flowers, The Lost City, Garfield again. Garfield, I'll tell you, those movies, bad. Just bad. Bad vibes. Awful. Just too... They're not for kids. It's it's too... too. I don't know. It's like evil or something. Uh, Get Smart, he was in. I mean, what role does he have in Tootsie? It's just he's the uh, I think he's his roommate. He's his roommate, right. Oh, Zombieland. That was a good one. Yes. I uh, don't know. It was. It wouldn't break my my top five, but uh, I guess that's it. Really, see, his best movies are pre nineteen ninety. Well, well uh, pre ninety ninety five, I guess. That's just we have to put it this way: the best movies for us. Yeah, we because know what we're clearly, talking about. What? And we know best what we're talking about. Oh, he 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 voiced Baloo in the newer uh, Jungle Book. That sounds like fucking racist cultural appropriation to me. I will say that the that Jungle Book from 2016 is just amazing. Really, just ridiculously well done. Um, he's in Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is going to come out in 2021. Is that what Ivan Reitman? I think so. Um, J- Jason Reitman. His son? Mm-hmm. Or has Ivan passed away? I think he might have. I'm not sure. Um, Paul Rudd is also in it. Ah, he's a great drummer. <laughs> Anywho, um, that's been our top five. Do you remember your top five, Dave? Uh, yeah, my number five was, uh, uh, Stripes, no. Yes. Stripes, and then, uh, Kingpin, and Where the Buffalo Roam, uh, Scrooge, and What About Bob? Excellent. With a side mention to Tootsie. And, and, and side order fries. And there was a little bit too much talk about Tex. Oh, you don't know the glory of Tex, baby. <laughs> I guess I don't, and I guess I, I shan't. Uh, anyway, this has been our 96th episode. We're a little late with this one because uh, of quite a few reasons. The weather's been great here, and I had to do some more auto body repair on I my... I had to see a man about a horse. Auto re- body repair on my Toyota, which uh, a video of that is coming soon. It was uh, a nightmare, and uh, it was just really difficult. We should we Wiener. make our should we make our announcement or not? We'll wait. Yeah, no announcements. Okay, we have a special announcement, but uh, we are not making it today. So. You'll have to think on that. But we have mentioned it. I have mentioned it before, so. Uh, all right. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? Uh, no, I think I'm uh, all set here. I just want to say that uh, we have acquired a VCR, a working VCR, and I have been uploading to YouTube old episodes before we did podcasting i had a uh, public access show in manhattan and uh i've been uploading those to youtube and uh if you want to see those they are on our youtube page um you know what i just thought of something what i think there's more bill murray movies that are not good than are good and that's just his fault. All right. Well, these were our top five favorite Bill Murray movies. I mean, movies. When you think that's even a you think that's a possibility, right? Well, I mean, that's for anybody. That's well, for no, anybody. Well, no, it's not for anybody. No, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. 
Or does it just the whole Dave, movie industry go to shit after 1995? No, no, this is what happens. And it is for it is for everybody. Why is that? Because the first couple they make are <laughs> are great and then it becomes a money grab. And that's and that was with everyone. Look at Pacino. Look how quickly his everything he made went to shit. Look at De Niro. No, Look at Nick Cage. Pacino, what? What's shitty? Everything he's made after... Uh, hey, Jack and Jill is beautiful. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Everything he's made after a certain year is not right, going so to be in problem. anybody's top five list. So all big movies suck after a certain time. No. <laughs> you're, you're, it's not... After the first few movies that make them popular and make them get the big bucks, then they just start taking the big bucks. So, I mean, there's good movies out there that have, you know, lesser known people. And after the next four or five movies by those lesser known people, their stuff is going to be shitty too, because that's just what happens. It's what happens. Look at uh, Nick Cage. I love him. Yeah, we love him and we love his movies, even if they're not great. But there's just something about Nick Cage. But if he's making 34 movies a year... Well, he's an exception because you can't say that he's made more bad movies than good because his bad movies are good. But not for the right reasons. He's barely made any good movies. <laughs> he's the opposite. He's got Valley Girl. Oh, that's a good movie. He's got uh, the movie you like with a creepy. Oh. Was that Vampire's Kiss? Yes, yeah, very good. He's got a lot of stuff that's... that's he's got the, the National Treasure movies are great. They're fun. He's got some fun stuff. He's got that movie with the little Fonda girl where he wins the lottery. And he's the cop. Nick Kahina. Anyway. All right. The Wicker Man. Well, that's not a good movie. How about The Weather Man? The Weather Man is... I remember when we re-reviewed it, it was a nine. We gave it a nine. So that's a great movie. All right, movie. man. All right. Anyway, um, so go and check out my public access shows. There's like uh, four of them up right now. Um, more to come. I think we have 200 episodes, maybe. I know I made 200 episodes, but I don't know if we have all of them here. But we definitely have at least 100 here. So I'm going to just upload them and poison YouTube with those. All right. Uh, you can go to uh, middleagecoolkids.com. For all of your middle-aged cool kids' needs, and um, maybe be looking there for our special announcement coming soon-ish. All right. Uh, thanks for listening, and we will see you next time, America. Thank you, Nathan. Bye, bye.